Okay. So, next, uh, uh, next uh, we will start that first order circuit, Th this is your chapter 6, right. So, uh, here we will see the DC tangent, particularly the your uh, RL circuit and RC circuit, uh, only uh, we will see that why it is called first order circuit also. So, when this topic is over, we will go for the AC circuit, so we start for single phase then three phase, right. So, first uh, some introduction I have made it for you that in the previous chapters we have considered three passive elements, the resistors, capacitors and inductors individually. So, in this chapter we will examine your two types of circuit, a circuit you are comprising a resistor and capacitor and a circuit comprising a resistor and your inductor. I mean we will see the two types of circuit that is a circuit comprising a resistor and capacitor and we will see a circuit comprising a resistor and inductor and these are called RC circuit and RL circuit respectively right. We carry out the analysis of RC and RL circuit by using your what you call KCL uh, your, K, your KCL and KVL and produces different equations which are more difficult to solve than algebraic equation right. So, just uh, just let me this thing. So, the differential equations resulting from analyzing R C and R L circuit that is your the differential equation resulting analyzing that R C and R L circuits are of the first order right. Hence, it is underlined the circuits are known as first order circuits. A first order circuit is characterized by first order differential equation. So, there are two ways it will be two right I am correcting it right. So, there are two ways to excite the circuit the first way to excite the circuit is by initial condition of the storage element right that will be a source free circuit right. This circuit are called source free circuit that means, circuit is excited by the initial initial your what you call that your conditions of the storage ele your storage elements and these are three circuits are called source free circuit right. So, actually in that case we assume that the energy is initially stored in that your what you call in that uh, circuit element just one one in that uh, is stored in the capacitor capacitor or inductive element right. So, the stored energy causes the current to flow in the circuit and gradually dissipated in the resistor. So, source free circuits are free or of independent sources, but they may have dependent sources. So, it may have I mean it is it is there will be no independent sources, but they may have dependent sources. The second way a second way to excite the first order circuit is by independent sources. So, in this chapter or in this topic we will consider DC independent sources right first we will see the source free circuit. So, whenever you see source free circuit here no when we will see uh, when I will solve numericals one or two cases or two three cases I will tell you the solution and this way, but your one or two cases I will not tell you that how one or two cases I have obtained I will give you uh, your what you call that you think that how it has come, but that will come later. So, when DC source of a RC circuit is suddenly disconnected a source free RC circuit occurs right. So, the energy already stored in the capacitor is gradually dissipated in the resistor. So, that means figure 1 suppose it shows a series combination of a resistor and an initial energy your charge capa initial uh, uh, sorry initially charge capacitor. So, main objective is to examine the circuit response. So, in this case this, ca this capacitor was initially charged and our resistor is there. Although I C and I R it is a it is a it is a simple circuit, but at this point if you apply K C L if you if take like this that I C is going this way and I R is going this way both are leaving. So, I C plus I R equal to 0 right although it is the same circuit, but for uh, some analysis we will do that and this is your this side is your voltage right this is the voltage the V is the voltage across the capacitor or across the resistor it is same right. So, it is a source free circuit there is no independent source in the circuit assuming that this capacitor was initially charged and if you apply K V L at this point it will be I C plus I R is equal to 0 right. So, this is a source free circuit. Now, 
So, assume that the voltage across capacitor is V t since the capacitor is initially charged we assume that at time t is equal to 0 the initial voltage V 0 uh, is equal to V 0 right. So, in this case we are assuming at t is equal to 0 that is V 0 is equal to your capital V suffix 0 this is the voltage initial voltage. Now, store energy in the capacitor initially the W C 0 is equal to half C V 0 square right just hold on. So, Just, uh, just, just hold on. Uh, so, in this case, the store energy in the capacitor is this uh, WC zero is equal to half CB zero square, right? So, applying KCL at node A, I told you IC plus IR is equal to zero. Right. So, let me clear it. So, so, by definition we know that I c is equal to c into d v by d t and at the same time I r is equal to v by r. If you come to this circuit, if you come to this circuit that your this voltage I told you this voltage is your v. So, I r uh, is, is equal to v upon r right because uh, same voltage across the capacitor and across the resistor. So, V is equal to I R. So, I R uh, R into I R. So, I R is equal to V by R. Similarly, here also your uh, I C is equal to C into D V by D T right. This V is across the same this capacitor as well as the resistor. So, let me clear it. So, in this case your this is C into D V by D T plus V by R is equal to 0 because I R is equal to V by R is equal to 0 or d v by d t plus v by r c is equal to 0. So, this is a first order differential equation since only the first derivative of v is involved. So, equation 4 can be written as we can write d v by v uh, is equal to minus 1 upon r c d t. So, this one you can write that your d v by v is equal to minus 1 upon r c d t this is equation 5 integrate both side this side you will get ln v natural log minus t upon r c plus some constant ln a we have taken instead of a or c 1 c 2 directly we have taken ln a for simplicity. So, this is equation 6 now where a is the integration constant thus ln if you I mean if you make this one ln v bring this one to this side left side minus ln a right is equal to minus t upon r c. So, this side this side can be written as ln v upon a is equal to minus t upon r c that is what it is written here right. So, this is equation 7. So, let me clear it. So, taking power of E I mean now if you uh, take power of E it is given. So, v t is equal to a into your e to the power minus t upon r c actually it was given here no here here it was given here right. So, here uh, your here it is given L n means it is log of base e. So, v upon a is equal to e to the power minus t upon r c or v is equal to a into e to the power minus t upon r c as v is a function of t that is why you are writing v t right. So, just uh, uh, so that is why we are writing v t is equal to a e to the power minus t upon r c. Now, but from the initial condition when the time t is equal to 0 v t is equal to v 0 is equal to capital V suffix 0 right. Therefore, at t is equal to 0 if you write then it will become this part will become 1 and it will v 0 is equal to a. So, that is a is equal to v 0 right because v 0 is equal to earlier we, we are writing v in the initial condition v 0 is equal to capital V suffix 0. So, this is equation 9 I have not given some equation number. Therefore, my v t is equal to v 0 e to the power minus t upon r c this is equation 10. Now, equation 10 shows that the voltage response of the r c circuit is an your what you call is an exponential decay of the initial voltage and it is called the natural response of the circuit because it is given e to the power minus t upon r c. So, naturally it is your exponential decay of the initial response and it is called the natural response of the circuit 
because this response is due to the initial energy stored and the physical characteristic of the circuit and not due to the external voltage or current source right that means this is called your natural response of the circuit because the response is due to the initial energy stored and the physical characteristic of the circuit right and not due to some external voltage or current source because it is a source with circuit so this is called the natural response right of the circuit so let me clear it so now if we plot if we plot that v is equal to v0 e to the power minus t upon tau that is your uh, that is v is, uh, v is equal to your v0 e to the power minus t upon rc if we take tau is equal to rc then v is equal to v0 e to the power minus t upon tau where tau is equal to rc tau actually is called the your time constant right we will see that so so that's why this plot is v0 is equal to e to the power minus t upon tau now let me clear it so voltage response this is the voltage response of the rc circuit now and when when uh, I will come to that, but I am telling that when t equal to tau and t is equal to tau, then v will be is equal to v0 e to the power minus tau by tau that is v0 e to the power minus 1 that will become 0.368 v0 that is here it is written here. When t is equal to tau, then it is 0 0.368 v0, right. So, let me clear it. Now, I will come to some explanation. So, figure this is your figure 2, this is your figure 2. Figure 2 shows the natural response at t is equal to 0, we have the correct initial condition V0, your what you call your V is equal to V0 at t is equal to 0. So, it is V is equal to V0, right. And as time t increases, the voltage decreases towards 0. The rapidity with, uh, with which the voltage decreases is expressed in terms of the time constant denoted by tau right and expressed as tau is equal to r c this is the time constant of that circuit. Therefore, equation 10 can be expressed as v t is equal to v 0 to the power minus t upon tau I told you. So, at t is equal to tau v tau is equal to v 0 e to the power minus 1 that also I told you is equal to 0 0.368 v 0 that means this one 0 0.368 v 0 right. So, that means equation 13 we can state that the time constant of a circuit is the time required for the response to decay 36.8 percent of its initial value this is 0.368 that means if you take in percentage that is 36.8 percent of initial value means V0 right. We can state that the time constant of a circuit is the time required for the response to decay 36.8 percent of its initial value. Now, table C, I have make a table, table 1 shows the value of V t by V 0 from the from your from uh, table 1 it is seen that the voltage V t is less than 1 percent of V 0 after t is equal to 5 tau. I mean this is V is equal to V t is equal to V 0 to the power minus t upon tau that means V t by V 0 is equal to t to the power minus t upon tau when t is equal to tau its ratio is becoming 0 0.3678 when 2 tau 0 0.1353 and so on up to when 5 tau it is 0 0.0067 less than 1 percent right less than 1 percent. Therefore, that when after t is equal to 5 tau right it is less than 1 percent thus it is your what you call customary to assume that the capacitor is fully discharged right fully discharged or fully charged when it will be in other way right after 5 time constant. In other words it takes t is equal to 5 tau for the circuit to reach its steady state when no changes takes uh, your uh, when no changes take place with time that means for this graph if you come if you go up to tau 2 tau 3 tau up to 5 tau so time is equal to t is equal to 5 tau after that you will find almost no change right it is almost it is a steady state. So, that is your what you call this table shows that this table shows right. So, the time constant may be viewed from another perspective evaluating the derivative of V t in equation 12 at t is equal to 0. So, it equation 12 
if you come to this equation 12, this is your equation 12, v t is equal to v 0 e to the power minus t upon tau, right. Take the derivative of this, right, I will come to that. You take the your you take v by v 0, then e to the power minus t by tau, right. So, d t t of v by v 0 you take at t is equal to 0, it becomes minus 1 by tau e to the power minus t upon tau and at t is equal to 0, right, it becomes minus 1 upon tau. Right. So, this is equation 14 say. Now, from equation 14 we can state that the time constant is the initial rate of decay or the time taken for v by v 0 to decay from unity to 0 assuming a constant rate of decay. This initial slope at t is equal to 0 your, in, uh, your what you call interpretation of the time constant is used in the laboratory to determine tau graphically from the response curve displayed on an say oscilloscope, right. So, for determining tau from the response curve draw the tangent to the curve at t is equal to 0, the tangent meets the time axis at t is equal to tau that means, at t is equal to 0, at t is equal to 0 if you draw a tangent it will meet here at tau, right here it will meet here at tau, right and this tangent is at t is equal to your 0 somewhere from somewhere you draw the tangent and it will meet at tau, right. So, this is determination of time constant tau from the response curve. This way also you can find out your time constant at the laboratory whatever graph you get from that you can do it and then 2 tau, 3 tau up to 5 tau it is shown, right. So, it can be observed from equation 11 if you come to equation 11, right, hold on this is tau is equal to r c, right. So, it can be observed from equation 11 that the smaller the time constant the faster the response this is shown in figure 4. I mean if this when tau is equal to 2 response is slower, when tau is equal to 1 much faster than tau is equal to 2, if you further the, your tau decreases response become faster, right. So, this is this side is taken v upon v 0 is equal to the power minus t upon tau the ratio is taken on the y axis. So, this is the response curve of various values of the time constant tau at any rate whether the time constant is small or large the circuit reaches steady state at t is equal to 5 tau because it is a your it is less than 1 percent that, that you are of your what you call the ratio whatever you have taken right. So, circuit reaches steady state at t is equal to 5 tau, right. Therefore, current I r t can be expressed as I r t is equal to v t upon r, we have seen in the circuit same thing. So, it will be v 0 upon r e to the power minus t by tau, this is the current I r, right. The power dissipated in the resistor is p t is equal to v t into I r. So, if you put v t is equal to your v 0 e to the power minus t upon tau, and I r is equal to this one, this expression equation 15 multiply, you will get V 0 square upon r e to the power minus 2 t upon tau, this is equation 16, right. So, the energy absorbed by the resistor up to time t, the W r t is 0 to t p t d t, right, p t p is a function of t. So, 0 to t, this is v equation 16, V 0 square upon r e to the power minus 2 t upon tau d t, right. If you integrate this, you will get your tau is equal to R c the time constant half C v 0 square into 1 minus e to the power minus 2 t upon tau. Note that as t tends to infinity omega r infinity is equal to half C v 0 square that is omega c 0, right. So, initially initial energy stored in the capacitor is eventually dissipated in the resistor. So, if you t tends to infinity then it is simply becoming half C V 0 square because this term will not be there and is equal to your initial energy stored W C 0, right. So, initial energy stored in the capacitor is eventually dissipated in the resistor. So, next we will take uh, your one or two small e uh, some example. So, this is hope uh, uh, hope this uh, source phi R C circuit will be understandable to you, right. Actually nothing is there only very simple thing, very simple thing. Right. So, so here your uh, a simple circuit of a this thing is taken a series parallel your parallel circuit right. So, 5 ohm resistor is here 
0.1 microfarad capacitor is uh, sorry 0.1 farad is there voltage across it is vc this is 5 ohm resistor and this is 15 ohm 5 and 15 both are in series but taken sep uh, given separately and current through is ix and voltage across 15 ohm resistor is vx you have to you have to find out initial values of the your capacitor voltage that is your 10 volt is given vc0 you have to determine we have to determine vc uh, that is your this one then vx and ix for t greater than 0 this we have to find it out right now first we obtain the equivalent or thevenin resistance across the capacitor terminal so thevenin resistance thevenin uh, resistance we have studied right thevenin equivalent so in this case if you try to find out your what you call that your uh, uh, that your across this uh, uh, these two terminal what will be the thevenin uh, resistance though this 5 ohm and 15 ohm so 20 ohm so it is here it both are in series so let us see it is, is equal to 20 ohm that means and 5 ohm these two are in parallel so it will be 5 into 20 divided by 5 plus 20 so it will be 4 ohm right 100 by 25 so 4 ohm so let me clear it so if you if you find out r eq is equal to r thevenin it is 5 into 5 15 plus uh, 5 and 5 plus 5 plus 15 is the same thing that you are what you call 4 ohm right I little uh, all these things I have written like this right but there I showed the calculation therefore equivalent, equivalent circuit will be this capacitor it is a source piece circuit so 0 0.1 farad and this r this r eq is equal to 4 remember for this kind of thing you have to make the r thevenin first equivalent right let us see how things happen and this voltage is your this voltage is v that means across the 0 0.1 farad capacitor it is v across r also it is your r eq also it is v right so let me clear it so the time constant uh, is tau is equal to we have seen rc so it is r eq here into c so r eq is 4 into c is 0 0.1 so 0 0.4 second right and v is equal to you know v0 e to the power minus t by tau but v0 is given 10 volt so v0 is equal to v0 is equal to vc0 is equal to 10 volt it is given and tau is equal to 0 0.4 second therefore vc is equal to v is equal to 10 e to the power minus t upon 0 0.4 so that is 10 e to the power minus 2.5 t volt this is a simple thing from the previously developed uh, your formulas we are just putting the data so from figure 6.5 we use the voltage division to get vx right now if you come to this if you come to this figure so first uh, suppose if this voltage is v suppose if this voltage is v right then voltage division this is vx so voltage division because 5 and 15 ohm are in series so it will be 15 by 15 plus 5 into this v that will be your vx this voltage across this is v so it will be 15 divided by 15 plus 5 because it is 15 here it is 5 into your this voltage this voltage v that is voltage division right so let me clear it so this is what we have done here this is vx is equal to 15 upon 15 plus so it will be v v we have got 10 e to the power minus 2.5 t v is equal to vc v is equal to vc so it is 0.75 into 10 e to the power minus 2.5 t so it is 7.5 e to the power minus 2.5 t volt right and i x is equal to v x upon 15 because across this across 15 ohm resistance the voltage is v x so naturally we can take i x is equal to v x by 15 so v x we have got so i x is equal to v x upon 15 so it will be 7.5 e to the power minus 2.5 t upon 15 is equal to 0 0.5 e to the power minus 2.5 t ampere this is your i x right this answer all we all answers we have got now next example i hope you are understanding this i hope you are understanding this so the initial voltages on the capacitor c1 and c2 in the circuit i'll show you shown in figure 7 have been established by sources not shown sources not shown but initial conditions have been established this is the language of the problem the switch is closed at t is equal to 0 therefore you determine v1 to v2 to 
uh, v sorry v 1 t v 2 t then v t and i t for t greater than 0 right <coughs> sorry. Next you calculate the initial ch energy stored in the capacitor C 1 and C 2 right. Next C determine how much energy stored in the capacitor as t tends to infinity and so that uh, the store energy delivered to the 250 kilo ohm resistor is the difference between the result obtained in B and C. So, these are the four things you have to make it right. Now, here one thing I will not tell you I will just uh, this thing, but first uh, this is the circuit is given I will look at the polarity right. So, here we have taken V 1 t this is the capacitor C 1 it is 5 microfarad this is capacitor C 2 20 microfarad and this is plus minus somewhere I have marked plus minus. So, this is V 1 uh, t V 2 t right. So, V 1 t means across C 1 V 2 t means across C 2 and this is 250 kilo ohm resistor and across the voltage is V t and current flowing through is I t and switch was this capacitor was charged but switch was open now switch is closed at t is equal to 0 right. So, question is look at the polarity here uh, this polarity is given plus here it is minus but here it is minus here it is plus this is the this is that your tricks in the problem. So, I will simply write it and uh, one only one or two place I will tell you look at this polar when you will solve this problem you will see that the polarity of this so whatever it is given this is minus this is plus and again here it is plus here it is minus. So, from, so you can easily you can easily or what you call you can easily make it that uh, how what is the initial conditions right. So, let me clear it. So, this all these things are given I mean all this uh, your what you call this is given and you have to find out right. So, now question is an initial voltage here is given 4 volt and here it is 24 volt right, but look at the polarity and accordingly you have to choose the sign of that your what you call that initial voltage. So, and so this this polarity is marked. So, figure this actually these two capacitors are in series 5 microfarad and 20 micro C 1 and C 2. So, it is uh, equivalent to the way you do the parallel resistor. So, therefore, here it is C Q is equal to 1 upon C 1 plus 1 upon C 2 to the power minus 1 reciprocal right. So, 1 upon 5 plus 1 upon 20 is reciprocal it becomes 4 microfarad that is C equivalent and given that V C 1 0 just I am writing that 4 volt and V C 2 0 24 volt right. So, this is the initial condition therefore, V C E Q will be V C 2 0 minus V C 1 0 that is 20 volt because if you try to take your what you call a your um, this thing uh, suppose suppose if I want to take V C E Q equivalent right uh, that is V C E Q 0 suppose if I want right and if this is my this is my plus and this is my minus. So, it will be V C Q right then minus your V C 2 0 then plus V C 1 0 is equal to 0 right. So, I am just looking at that polarity that means V C Q is equal to V C 2 0 minus V C 1 0. So, it is given 24 volt the V C 2 24 and that is given 4. So, it is 20 volt right. Uh, so, this is that your what you call V C Q 0 suppose if you look like this right. So, that is why that is why that your V C Q 0 is equal to 20 volt and V 0 is equal to then capital V 0 for V C Q 0 is equal to 20 volt because this is the equivalent circuit. So, source T R C circuit whatever you have done and this is 4 microfarad and this is here 250 kilo ohm and same way we are drawing this is V t this is the equivalent circuit of that one right. Now, the time constant is tau is equal to R C Q 250 into 10 to the power 3 this kilo ohm. So, convert into ohm into 4 into 10 to the power minus 6 where 4 microfarad. So, that is 1 second thus the expression for V t is we know V t is equal to V 0 e to the power minus t upon tau. So, it is 20 to the power minus uh, t volt. So, and I t is equal to from this circuit simply V t upon R the earlier we have seen. So, it is 20 to the power minus t by 250 into 1000. So, 80 to the power minus t micro ampere right. So, by definition we can calculate the expression for V 1 t and V 2 t. So, this we know V 1 t is equal to 
look at the polarity of v 1 and v 2 right everything. So, just uh, just uh, uh, just we have uh, we have made it know that uh, your what you call that I c plus I r is equal to 0 something we have uh, given no. So, our I c plus your what you call that your I t uh, instead of I r you can make it it is I t right. So, that means I c is equal to your uh, this is a general thing right. So, you have to find out V 1 and uh, V 2 right and uh, this current I c is flowing through both your for a C 1 and C 2 both are in series. So, both through both C 1 and C 2. So, what you have to do is just uh, just you have to see just you have to see that how we write the equation right if i t is given. So, this is your just hold on let me let me clear it uh, let me clear it. Uh, so, this uh, if you come to this circuit equivalent circuit this is your i t uh, this is your i t and this is suppose this is my i c right somewhere if you put the way we saw that i c plus then i t is equal to 0 right or my i c is equal to minus i t right. So, we know i c is equal to c into d v by d t in general this is this is your what you call this is your equivalent circuit, but if you if you come to your this circuit original circuit right original circuit when c is closed when the switch is closed switch is closed this is closed. So, this is i t and say this is current is showing i c. So, here also i c is equal to i c is equal to then minus i t because i c plus i t is equal to 0 this is closed apply case some point at KCL, right. So, i c is equal to minus i t right. So, that will be i c is equal to one is your what you call that your c 1 uh, d v by d t another will be d v 1 by d t another will be c 2 d v by d t separately you have to do it. So, if you if you come to now this expression this equation if you come to this equation we are writing now after you just do the integration. So, it will be minus 1 upon c 1 0 to t this i t expression is there this i t expression is there we have got this expression 8 to it is power minus t micro ampere right and 0 to t and this is we are making it minus 4 that is initial condition v c 0 is given 4 volt, but here we are putting minus 4. So, why we are writing minus 4 just a uh, this is uh, this is a this is your what you call it cause your a um, problem to you you find out that why you are doing it try to understand why we are doing it right instead of plus 4 here it is minus 4 right just just try to understand this. So, this is a cause this is a problem to you right and otherwise if you cannot do it we will answer in that forum right do not worry, but first you think then similarly v after simplifying this v 1 to is equal to 16 to the power minus 2 minus 20 volt. Similarly, v 2 t is equal to here same thing that i t is there and your whatever capacitors value was there everything is given there right everything is ok, but here we are putting that v initial value v 2 v 0 24 volt here it is plus sign right do not minus sign look at the polarity there and just think right why we have made it like this. So, that means, if you do it v 2 t is equal to 4 e to the power minus t plus 20 volt right. We also can obtain v 2 2 by using k v l if you apply k v l v t is equal to v 1 t plus v 2 t or v 2 t is equal to v t minus v 1 t v 2 we got 20 e to the power minus t therefore, v 1 t minus 16 e to the power minus t plus 20 if you simplify you will get the same thing v 2 t is equal to 4 e to the power minus t plus 20 volt right. Now, b part the initial energy stored in C 1. So, this question is given there where it is minus 4 and here it is plus 24 initial voltage 4 volt here is 24 volt, but this is a question to you right. So, that second part is initial energy stored in C 1 it is W C 1 0 is equal to half C 1 V C 1 0 square you put all the values you will get 40 uh, micro joule. Similarly, for W C 2 0 if you make half C 2 V C 2 0, 0 square substitute all the values right you will get your 5760 micro joule right. Now, total energy stored in the two capacitor you add 30 micro joule plus 5760 micro joule. So, 5800 micro joule right. Now, C as T tends to infinity V 1 is equal to V 1 infinity you will get minus 20 volt as T tends to infinity right and V 2 is equal to V 2 infinity you will get 20 volt right. 
So, all v 1 v 2 expressions are there just see that t tends to infinity how much it is. Therefore, the energy stored in the two capacitors is that is w c half is equal to half that is your 5 plus 20 is 20 into 10 to the power minus 6 into 400, 400 means this 20 square right. So, minus 20 square is 400 plus 20 square is also 400 right. So, and it is your half c 1 plus c 2 that is 25 microfarad actually that is 25 into 10 to the power minus 6 400. So, 5000 microjoule, but here it is 5800 microjoule. So, there is a difference of these two is your how much 800 microjoule. The total energy delivered to the 250 kilo ohm resistor is W r infinity is equal to 0 to infinity p t d t that is 0 to infinity to just p t p power is equal to v into i, v is this much, i is equal to this much, this is microjoule right. Therefore, 0 to infinity 1600 e to the power minus 2 t microjoule, so 800 microjoule right. That means, comparing the result obtained B and C shows 800 microjoule is equal to 5800 minus 5000, so is equal to 800 microjoule. This energy stored in the equivalent capacitor is half equivalent to as 4 microfarad half C V square, it is 800 microjoule right. So, this 800 microjoule actually dissipated in the your resistor. So, because this capacitor predicts the terminal behavior of the original series connected capacitor, the energy stored in the equivalent capacitor is the energy delivered to the 250 kilo ohm resistor. So, this problem this is a this is a good problem for you. So, just when you will get this your video just have a look that what has been done that if you understand all this then you will not face any difficulties of solving this kind of problem. So, thank you very much we will be back again.